it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we're covering The Witcher episode four of Banquets, Bastards, and Burials. And the synopsis for this episode is Against his better judgment, Geralt accompanies Jaskier to a royal ball. Ciri wanders into an enchanted forest. Yennefer tries to protect her charges. And uh, yeah, th- I found this episode really humorous <laughs> i really loved it yeah i enjoyed this this episode a lot and uh and i was gonna say it later on but you know i really am in, enjoying that we're kind of slowing down taking one episode a week because now i can really ingest the episode and really watch it a, a couple of times and really focus on it and not have to worry about trying to to pick out from another episode but this one there was a lot of stuff uh, as I watched it, there was a lot of stuff in this episode that sets up for the really the rest of the season, and I'll talk about that some in my in my my five points. But uh, uh, but yeah, this was a, a really really great episode. We got to see all three of our characters. We got to see all three of uh, of them involved in different things, different aspects of of what's going on, and uh, so yeah, it was really really good. Yeah, definitely. I I love the humor element throughout it between Geralt and the menstrual mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and, yeah and everything that goes on within I think this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the season yeah I, I would go out on a limb at this point right now and, and say this is definitely up there you, you know again just because of the fact that we got to see all of our characters we got to see Yaskier again we didn't see him at all in the last episode so it was it was nice to get a lot of him in this episode and uh, yeah so <laughs> I, I I would I would go out and say this is this is probably one of my favorite I'm not gonna say it's the best because I can't remember now enough of the next uh, five. Four or five? Wait, we're this is episode four. Mm-hmm. There's eight total, so five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, four more. Four more. Uh, but yeah. you know, a lot goes on in between those. Yeah. And on top of that, this to me, it, it just basically gave me more, mm-hmm. you know, uh, of everything. You know, the action, the uh, story, as well as the humor. And oh, absolutely. Me, that, yeah. that makes so much to me. You know, I, yeah. I just love the idea. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We got to see all aspects of the, the the storytelling in this episode for sure. And I guess we should get on to our top five. Absolutely. Don't judge me. All right, I'll, I'll start it off. First. Yeah, go ahead, because I think I started last week. So, yeah, it's your turn. My number five would be seeing Fiona or Siri before and after the banquet where she ends up and how things happen within her life at that point and which affects other people's uh the time shifts are interesting and now i understand while watching again what's going on (laughs) with the the actual show and the storyline with everything because like you know like i stated before it's almost like a quentin tarantino movie everything's (laughs) out of order (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of piece it together. And this is kind of my, this is, is similar to or adjacent to, maybe not exactly, uh, my number five, which is the fact that we we get more of Yennefer's timeline specifically in this one. In when she's traveling, you know, in that carriage, she says to the princess that she's been there for three decades. She's been dealing with these political, and what does she say, wiping the, wiping the ass of the political or something like that. Yeah. People uh, for three decades. And so we, we see that she's getting closer and closer to the present Geralt timeline. It gets confusing because really, Siri, we don't know how far ahead of Geralt Siri is at this point. So so we're kind of trying to, to to put these together into different different places. And also, 
you know, it's the fact that we see at this banquet at the end of the episode, actually, we see Mausak uh, talking about the fact that he's going to go ahead and stay in Sintra, that he's going to help raise this baby and the baby, we, the, the baby that we find out that Princess Pavetta, Pavetta, whatever her name is, Pavetta <laughs> is, is pregnant with. That is the Siri that we're seeing in the other timeline. So we get this idea from, from Mausak. We hear him say he's going to stay there and and take care of her and kind of raise her so again and then at the very end of the episode we see him get captured by Nilfgaard because again we're kind of catching up to what I guess what I'm going to call the present I guess what we'll call series timeline the present because that's the most future one as far as we know or, or what do you think it's kind of like the most consistent throughout the show. Yeah. Like Whereas said, Calanth Calanthe was very erratic. Yeah. And Geralt is pretty much the same because he goes back and forth. I think the Siri timeline is the most in the future or is the most, you know, what we would call close to the present. So we would call Siri. So, so you know, he, he pledges that he's going to take care of her. And then, of course, at the we hear her say that Mausak kind of raised her during that time. And then we see him grab that piece of clothing yeah. off from uh, Kalinthe's body as, as he's being dragged away by Nilfgaard. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So my number five is just the, the timeline stuff that we're still, we're still trying to figure out exactly where all these are. But I, I think, I, I think, like I said, like, like you and I have just agreed upon, I think the Siri timeline is the most future. Oh, the, definitely. The three, so. Yeah, definitely is the most recent. My number four would be Yennefer's multiple portaling to get away from the assassin, but to only abandon Khalees and leave her to the assassin to save herself. Then come back to, and tries to <laughs> save the child, but her power, she couldn't bring that child <laughs> back from the dead. And it was such a sad thing to see, but... It was an amazing watch to see that scene in itself. Yeah, I was I was a little confused at at the point because it it looks like like the the princess Princess Kali says, you know, oh you're a worthless sorceress or something like that, yeah. and then as she portals away that last time uh, from the princess, she's shouting at her and she leaves the the princess there with the assassin and his little pet dog. And I, I was kind of confused by that because I was like, wait a minute, aren't you supposed to be trying to protect them? Yep. And and then she portals back after, you know, we, we get this whole scene with the princess basically offering her baby. And I think I have this in my, later in my notes, maybe the, the princess offering her baby kind of as a sacrifice. Yep. To the assassin saying, oh, I know. Go ahead and kill the baby. Let me live. I know that yeah, I can produce it a male heir. Yeah, a horrible, horrible thing. And so it makes me wonder if maybe Yennefer kind of knew that was her attitude towards the baby. And that's why she portaled away. And then she portals back after the princess is killed and she retrieves the baby. And then, you know, unfortunately, the the assassin and I had to watch this a couple of times to figure out exactly what happened. The assassin, he threw his knife and it actually went through Yennefer. It went it went from her back to yeah. her front and killed the baby, the, the, the baby. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't trying to kill Yennefer, but he was definitely trying to kill the baby very specifically. And it just, it was, it was one of those things that I, I just still, I kind of, I kind of shook my head at because yeah, I, I get that maybe Yennefer, because she does fight and she kills the, the assassin's dog thingy, you know, right there, you know, <laughs> when she portals back and she takes the baby, she kind of fights a little bit with the assassin and cuts the head off somehow cuts the head off that little dog thingy yeah that thing from men in black that looks is, that, like what, a is that what it looked like to you? <laughs> yeah you know and then she portals away and then she realizes that oh the baby is is actually dead and and so it's just it's, you know I, I get that i guess she maybe she portaled back to specifically save the baby knowing that yeah. the princess was going to basically sacrifice her. But still, it, it was a little – that whole sequence was a little confusing. Yeah, it was. It, to me. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely was confusing. But the thing is is that 
I, I think the assassin was sent out on a mission just to end everything and all bloodlines within oh, the yeah. family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, that was his job, was and to kill I th- both. And I think this actually sets up for later on why Yennefer actually goes on her path to seek her own, oh, like, kind of like a business and yeah, everything else. you're right. I didn't think about that, but you're right, because yeah. this would basically put her on the kind of the outs with the, the with Adern, right? Because yeah. even though he ordered, he probably ordered the killing of his wife, he probably still has to show face of yeah, and I didn't think about that towards the end of the the season. Yeah, we'll have to pay attention to that to see what her relationship yeah, exactly. is towards the court of Adern after this. Yeah, that's why it's a rewatch, listeners. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so my number four is uh, I love that we kind of have kind of different kind of things this week. Uh, my my number four is the killing of, uh, and I'm gonna I know I'm gonna butcher it. I spelled it correctly in the notes, but the the Silkamore. Uh, by by Geralt, and I love that that Yaskier. We get this this cold open, or I think it's the cold, kind of the cold open. Yaskier is is in the 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 tavern there, and he's he's hearing the guy uh, kind of tell him all the details of what happened with Geralt, and he's writing it down. He's like, "Oh, this is great because Geralt never gives me the details." Yep. And then <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I thought it was great that the guy says that Geralt was dead, and then Yaskier's like, "Oh no." He's fine. Uh, and I've got that. Actually, I have that quote later in my notes. But uh, then, of course, Geralt just kind of bursts in and he's just covered in the guts, guts of, <laughs> yeah, of this creature to the point where the people can 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 smell it. And they're like, Ooh, what is that? And he's like, suck him all guts, um, you know, and <laughs> So I, I thought it was really cool that he didn't even bother, like, even though apparently he was in water, he must have been in water when he killed the thing, because they said it burst up out of the water or yeah. whatever, and uh, he didn't even bother to, like, rinse himself off or no. whatever. He's <laughs> literally walking in there. He just the doesn't things. care. He's yeah, like, ah. he doesn't even care. I'm all covered in these guts and stuff. I got the job done. Where's my gold? Yeah, where's my, where's my money? And, uh, you know, I love how when when he does walk in there and ask for his money and they give him his money and then the you know Yaskier starts singing the the toss a coin to your witcher and the whole you know the whole bar kind of chimes in yeah. uh, with him and, and and sings the chorus with him. I thought it was really cool. It it shows us that Geralt's fame has kind of of spread throughout this this kind of land. So that was really really cool. Exactly. And that yeah. also gives a little levity in what you actually see at the renaissance fairs <laughs> that you go to every year if you're like me and everybody else that go to a renaissance fair we do yeah. a pub crawl and that's what we do when we we have fun make jokes and there's a minstrel and there's always somebody that makes a you know yeah it's been cool a while things. since i've been to one but uh, you guys talking about it on let's talk through yeah. Kind of maybe me, me, uh, me look for maybe, look maybe next year. Hopefully yeah, next they have year. a pub crawl, dude, because that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> next year I'll try to do the Norman one like Ruthie was talking about. Yeah, we should. Yeah, you should do that. I I always go every year with my friend Tracy, and uh, it, it's kind of like a birthday thing because our Renaissance fairs only start in like the very beginning of August and end at the end of September, almost into October. Yeah, so, so you, might, you might get them this year. You never know. Yeah, I'm Depends hoping. Depends on, on what things what things happen. So. If not, we have to do our own pub crawl in our own houses and just do something. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So what's your number three? My number three would be uh, Fiona or Cirilla's power at the banquet. And, you know, and when, you know, saving Dunny or Dooney, as it were, the yeah. uh, hedgehog guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that was really cool because even Queen Calinthe, she says almost the exact same thing that she says to Siri. It's it's all and, and it made me wonder now because you know obviously in episode whatever it was one or two when she says to Siri, she says, "Oh, I thought y- the gift had skipped you, like it skipped me." But it didn't, and mm. she doesn't say that it didn't skip her mother. She just says, I thought that it skipped you like it skipped me. And and so to hear her say that to Pavetta, right? Yeah, to Pavetta. Yeah, to – yeah, 
Siri, yeah, Pavetta, Pavetta, yeah. or no, no, no. Pavetta Fiona, is the do- depending Pavetta on what you want to call her. <laughs> mother, Pavetta is the is the the princess who married Dunny. Who yeah. their progeny is Siri. So it's almost like she says it's. And I and I started to wonder as I listened to this the second time, as I watched the show the second time, I started to wonder. I wonder if if Queen Calinthe is a little jealous. You know that because she's like, "Hey, my mother has oh, I this think she gift. Is. <laughs> my daughter has this gift. My granddaughter has this gift. How come I didn't get this?" Exactly, and that's why she's always trying to prove her way and ruling her yeah, kingdom. Yeah, if you yeah, think the about more and it. more I thought about, it, the more and more I wondered if maybe. Maybe it's it was because she, you know, all of her suitors, as far as we know, are human, you know? Yeah, and they're human, and they have human attributes, yeah. and they they do their best, and she just looks down upon yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a Game of Thrones kind of thing, but in, in this sense, it's more of yeah. like a... It's like you don't have power, so I what? what yeah, no, I'm stuck with yeah. you. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So you it, know. it was really cool to see, and I I wonder, and I've got some more about this in my notes about Pavetta and her power, you know, because we it looks like when she initially uses that power to save uh, Dunny, killed by Queen Calente, it looks mm-hmm. like it's kind of raw, and and even I think Mausek says that that it's untrained. But then you know in the episode she does that whole thing where they they hover, they kind of fly up in the air, and the the wind is is raging around them. So it it makes me wonder if maybe she had used it, it maybe she knew or was aware that she had it. I don't know. I don't think no. we'll ever get an answer to that, but it just it's just an interesting thing that it seemed like it seemed like she had some really good control of it. The fact that she was able to push everybody back except her and Dunny. You know. So Exactly. Yeah, yeah, she didn't have that yeah, power. Yeah. Uh so that leads me uh, to uh, to my number 3 and my number 3 is uh, is Queen Calinthe. I I really love this this actress. <laughs> I love uh the and I I didn't write I should have wrote down her name of who's uh, portraying her, but I thought it was really really cool getting to see her come into the banquet and she's in her her full armor and she's got, you know, blood on her. It's very similar. It's it's very similar to how Geralt walked in in the beginning of the episode that after his fight with the Silkamore that we can see that she doesn't even care. She doesn't give uh, give an F, you know, because she just walks in yeah. and and people are like, where have you been? And she's like, she's like, well, a few upstart, uh, you know, townships in the south needed some reminding of who was queen. And then she kind of throws her helmet uh, at a guy, which I thought was really, really cool. I, and I wonder how many times they had to do that that uh that scene um if it was if it if it worked the first time or if she had to do it several times where she just basically throws the helmet behind her and the guy catches it and she yells for beer you know <laughs> i uh, i really i just i just love that that the guy caught it and you know i love her little interactions with siri where she says to siri you know, if it, you know, after you get married, then you can have any man you want. It it doesn't matter that you're going to have to be married to this oaf over here, who's who's you know drinking beer and and looking like a just looking like he looked like a frat boy really, and he's he's cutting up with his friends, and, and so Kalinthe just kind of tells her, you know, you can have whoever you want after you get married. And, uh, you know, she's like, you're, you're, my blood runs in your veins. You're the young lioness, all that, that kind of stuff. And I just love that, that, that moment when she's trying to, she's kind of talking to Geralt about, you know, I'm glad you're here because if any drama happens, because obviously, and as Geralt surmises later, she knew that Dunny was going to show up at some point and she's trying to get Geralt to kill Dunny and he won't do it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I just really like this character of the queen. I love that we're going to see her. And again, I, I just, I want to give props to Laura again, because Laura pointed out to us uh, last episode that the, that Queen Calente is kind of the touchstone to show us where, where things are at in the timeline. And so I, I, I exactly. It, it's a human that's aging. Yeah. Within that time, and we actually somebody to gauge that time within it exactly. And I, I just I love yeah. the, the character and love the portrayal of her. Oh, definitely. Yeah, she's got a lot of gumption, yeah. and on top of that, you know, it's like that whole bravado <laughs> exactly about yeah. her. I, I just yeah. love it. Yeah. 
My number two would be, uh, well, it would be Cirilla's or Fiona's truth comes out when she drinks the water in front of the women in Brooklyn Forest. And that was really cool to see, you know, because th there's a lot of things showing within that scene itself. Yeah, Broccolon Forest uh, was was really cool. I didn't put anything in my notes about it because because you you mentioned it, and I, I now was that all were they was all females? Could you tell? Okay, yes, it was it, all it females was, okay. except for her it, it, male companion. That right, was except for her the Dara boy, which we're still not clear about who shot him with the arrows. Be exactly, and we I we don't see that until later. Yeah, so it, it's, it's interesting to to to, to see this and uh, this whole Broccolon Forest, and I hope they they come back and show us some more of this. I know that that uh, series going to exit. Uh, I remember. Well, I know she leaves Broccolon Forest at some point, and so she doesn't drink enough of the water. So I know there's a point. I I think I don't remember what episode it is where she talks about the fact that she doesn't want to forget. The, exactly. her past. She yeah. doesn't want to forget what's going on because she wants to find Geralt. She wants to to fulfill her destiny, you know. So uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you brought up Broccolon Forest because there's a, there's a lot of stuff there that I, I wonder if it's setting up for the next season or if we're just not, we're not going to see it again. But uh, you know, it, it was really cool when she when you know Dara drinks the water and he goes, "Oh, this stuff is great. It's making me forget." Blah blah blah. Whatever it healed him, <laughs> and yeah. and then when she drinks, she's like, "Why didn't it work?" And the head dryad is is like, "Well, you've got to drink from the source." And then you know, <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's more yeah. pure, and yeah. you have to so do I, this. I thought that was that was really really cool. So. My number two is just, yeah. I thought it was funny. And again, it's more of the humor that you brought up is, is just Geralt being recognized by so many people at the banquet when, when literally <laughs> Yaskier takes him there going, Hey, I'm going to dress you kind of differently. Cause I don't want anybody to know that you're Geralt, but everybody, well, <laughs> but everybody yeah, knows I mean, anyway. It's, it's one of those things that I kind of, I kind of went back and forth. It's, it's really, really funny because Yaskier is the one who is spreading his fame, who is, is telling people about him, who's calling him the white witch or the, exactly. or whatever, the white warrior, whatever they call him. And, uh, the, the butcher of Bravadin and, and all that, you know, he's the one who's spreading it. And so, so he, he shouldn't be surprised when all these people recognize him and even yeah. Queen Calente <laughs> recognizes him. And, and I love when Geralt tells the story about, you know, the elves and uh, they're, they're, they ask him, well, how did you get past the elves? And he goes, well, honestly, the story, the, the song is wrong. I actually went ahead and just paid him off. And by falafel, by whatever that guy's that head elves, that guy, uh, yeah, uh, philandrel or whatever, however you say his name. Uh, I love that. I love the queen is like, is like, man, that's great. I love a person who can basically, you know, how I don't yeah. know how she, I don't remember how she said, I didn't write it down. Uh, she says about, you know, it's, it's great that you can still revel in your defeats even in your failings so I thought that, that was really cool just the whole thing of Geralt and, and she brings him up there to sit next to her on the table and he tells Yaskier after he he rescues him from the, the one guy telling the guy that he's a eunuch not that he couldn't have been the man the man with her with his wife because he's a eunuch and uh, you know so she calls him up to the head table and he's setting up there yeah <laughs> I thought that was it was hilarious because like, I didn't see his face, but I saw his pimply a butt. You know, I saw so, his butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. His buttocks. <laughs> uh, that will lead me to my number one, which would be mm -hmm. the the breaking of the spell over Dooney or Dunny with the wedding of Fiona slash Siri. Uh, <sighs> yeah, basically seeing yeah, I had Calampe's forgotten, body totally forgotten about that. at the end as well. At the end, where those that Ugh. are tracking Fiona or Siri, you that was a little disgusting <laughs> at the very end. Yeah, it, yeah, ooh, it's just ew. Yeah, and the guy says Broccolon Forest, and and the other guy, the, 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 yeah, they they just yeah, basically and, cut part of her skin off like a square, and the guy eats it so they could find out and trace her, and they they know exactly yeah, where. And, and, 
the other guy Siri says whatever we can, is, we can spare you know? ten thousand troops to go ahead and take it, and uh, and the Nilfgaard king is like, no, no, there's a better way to get her out of the forest. So yeah, yeah, that's that was a that was a, a, a creepy scene with that whole thing. So yeah, exa- they know exactly where it is. It's like, what spell gathering do they have? What monks do they have that have this capability? Yeah, we we see we see her dead body. We see that that, that she's definitely gone, and Sentra yeah. has been defeated. So so definitely, uh, there's some some trouble there. My number one is uh, is just this this whole thing about the law of surprise, and uh, and I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna lay this out. But also, we I do can, see the demise. Anything. So of when you Galante you, you save point. someone's life, and basically they can't repay you because it's their their life. How much are they gonna give you? For their life, yeah. obviously. Um, and so you claim yeah. this law of surprise that is basically whatever they have or whatever the next good thing is they're going to get belongs to you. Whether it's – and the, the way the guy that ends up marrying Calente, he describes it. He goes, it could be a bumper crop. It could be a new pup or exactly. even a child. And, you know, the, the two times we've seen that, obviously, the, the only two times we've actually seen this law of surprise come into effect is a child. Because Dunny, Dunny says, you know, I rescued your husband. He yells, Clinthe. He says, I rescued your husband. I saved his life. We didn't see that story. So that may be, I don't know if that's going to be a story we're going to get in season two or we're just supposed to just assume it. But he says, I saved and I claimed the law of surprise. And then I found out that you were with child. And so I knew that was my Correct. my payment was this child. But I, I had no... I wasn't even Dunny says I wasn't going to come. I wasn't going to claim it because that that wasn't my way. That's not right until just whatever happenstance. And he, he kind of tries to it was a little it was a little dodgy. I think the way he explained, because basically it sounded like he basically stalked her, um, you know, until he turned human. And then they just happenstance met and slept together and woke up the next morning he was a hedgehog and she still loved him so <laughs> which is a great little love story but at the same time i'm kind of like true mm, yeah it sounds Correct. a little sketchy yeah yeah it's like a reverse beauty of the beast <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> but what i didn't get was there at the end when the you know when she throws up the you know queen pavetta she or princess Pavetta, she throws up and so everybody and that's like oh you must be pregnant because you're vomiting which okay i guess that's the sign reasons i guess yeah exactly you know, it's like I there mean, are other ways no, to show pregnancy has, <laughs> yeah and there's other reasons why you could be vomiting the fact that you just went through this freaking huge spell that you and there was a lot of blood loss death and, <laughs> yeah 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 so there could be so many different reasons why you're vomiting but hey reasons okay you know, <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll wave our hand at that exactly and but even the witcher says you know he says no i'm not going to claim it and mousek is like well if you don't claim the, this child it's going to cause you know, whatever the end of days. And I'm like, well, how come Dunny not choosing the child originally? How come that didn't cause into day? Exactly. You know, he waited whatever, 17 years or let's, you know, let's make him not a pedophile and say he waited 18 years yeah. to come. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, so it just, it's just, it's one of those things that I'm just like, okay, you know, you're, you're being a little melodramatic mouse act, but but okay, you know. Um, but it, it is cool that we got to see yeah. that beginning where that destiny started. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the girl in the woods and the whole destiny thing. So we got some quotes here. You had a quote? Yeah, I have one. Uh, that would be the Witcher stating, Destiny helps people believe there is an order to this horseshit. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> that was a great... That was that at was the very great, end. Great. That was after... Yeah. She throws up and everything, and he's like, "Yeah," and he he says something O F or whatever right, when it happened yeah. too. Yeah, I love that when she throws up because it's like as soon as she throws up, he realizes what that means. And he's like, uh. so yeah. 
I had a couple here. I've already talked about one that just when Yaskier is, when the guy is telling Yaskier that the Witcher is dead, he's like, eh, he's fine. <laughs> I thought that was, I just, <laughs> that was the, that whole aside of, oh no, he's fine. And then of, of course, when they're, when they're talking about the banquet, Geralt says, I will not suffer tonight sober just because you hid your sausage in the wrong royal pantry. <laughs> <I> <laughs> Like I said, the yeah. humor in this episode, it, it just like it, it took me back to like your Hercules and Xena and all that. And I, I was like, I yeah, was just yeah, loving it. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about mm, um, some of mine. Why don't you go ahead and give yours and then I'll, I'll just run through my notes here that I have. Well, basically, uh, I an overview of it and this whole episode. It was pretty much just a breaking point of tradition. Yeah. That's what I got out of the whole story between the stories within Yennefer and Ciri. You know, they, they broke those sort of typical traditions that they had to. Ciri, you know, breaking away and doing her own thing. And Yennefer, at that point, breaking away yeah. what she was, tr like, destined to do. And her leaving the, the call of what she was supposed yeah in her mind was supposed to do which was to help these kingdoms these people and then going on her own thing that's what i got out of it yeah and that's what we're going to see as the as the season progresses we're going to see that she becomes kind of a a traveling mage or sorceress whatever until exactly. the very, very end when she hooks back up yep Let's see. So some of mine we already talked about. I thought it was cool. I thought it was an interesting thing that that Kalinthe that because Princess Pavetta marries Dunny, Kalinthe ends up marrying the uncle or the father. I didn't get totally the relationship there of the guy that Pavetta was going to marry. Like at the exactly. very beginning of the banquet, when Geralt asks, well, who's your money on to Mausak? Mausak says, well, this guy, but I heard that this guy has already uh, set up a thing because his uncle has been trying to marry Kalinthe and get, you know, get in with the kingdom. So he's already set up that his nephew is going to marry Pavetta. And so there at the end, and it, it I watched it a couple times and I tried to, I think it seemed like a surprise. The, like the first time I watched it, I thought maybe she and this guy had already talked it out. But the second time I watched it or the most recent time I watched it, it, she really seemed surprised when he came out of the blue, you know, when she, when she says that Pavetta is going to marry Dunny and nobody can speak against it. And he comes out and he's like, and the, whatever the ships of Skelligan as well, you'll have to face because queen Kalinthe has agreed to my proposal of marriage. And she gives him this look like all of a sudden she realizes, Oh, I now have to marry him mm -hmm. because Pavetta didn't marry his nephew. So uh, yeah. yeah, that so that that was pretty cool. I loved how Yennefer figured out pretty quickly that the sorcerer was an assassin. He was there because the princess had not given you know given him a male their king a male heir. And before we go too far, I want to make sure I just acknowledge the fact that Henry Cavill, like as much as he grunts or Cavill <laughs> Cavill Cavill Cavill, how do you say his name? Cavill, Cavill they say it yeah. You know, as much as he grunts in his dialogue, he really has some pretty, like, lengthy things that he has to say, and he has to say them in a very specific way, and he has to say them in that, uh, bah, gah, 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 gah. you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got to say them in that, that very uh, the gravelly kind of borrow tone kind yeah. of attitude or, yeah uh, it's uh, it's uh, if you ever watch uh if you ever watch supernatural uh misha collins plays a, a, a character who's an angel and i i heard one time in one of the outtakes or one of the interviews with him he he in his regular voice he said that you know he he initially came in and didn't think he was going to get the part and so he he auditioned in this very gravelly kind of voice and then of course he got the part and he had to say this use this gravelly voice for the next whatever <laughs> seven seasons or five six, six you know ten seasons whatever however many he he 
he portrayed that character since that season that show is in well, he, he gave them what they wanted is pretty much yeah, what it is yeah. and then he had to speak in this gravelly voice for the next you know the like, next 12 years or whatever so, so uh, <laughs> I, I guess talking like Harrison Ford when he gets interviews like, mm, mm, <laughs> yeah exactly works out <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I loved that that whole fight scene. We didn't talk about it very much, but that whole fight scene when when Dunny comes in and the queen orders him to be killed and Geralt and I tried to I tried to back it up to see, but we don't really get to see Geralt. It's it's almost like I, I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he like jumped or something, but it almost looks like he teleports from sitting next to the queen to standing next to Dunny. True. And yeah, and, and he rest, does. Because it's just like he appears. It's like one second he's at he's the table. There. <laughs> the next second he's there, you know. Yeah. And I, I really, like I said, I tried to back it up to see if I could figure out where, if they showed him in the air, but no. Because nah. he had to jump or something. But that whole fight scene, when he when he blocks the, whatever you call that, spear-looking thing with a axe head handle, uh, he cuts <laughs> it. Uh, you know, he grabs somebody's sword, or maybe he had a sword on him. And he cuts that thing and Dunny catches it. And then they start fighting back to back together. And then uh, the one guy who ends up marrying Kalinthe, he jumps in and starts helping the fight as well because he's like, the law of surprise must be whatever, honored, you know. And so he jumps in. And then at, you know, then the, the queen, she jumps in and she stops everything yeah. with her sword and says, no, everybody stop. The law of surprise has been. Uh, whatever invoked. So I thought yeah, that, exactly. that was really, that was a whole, that whole fight scene was really, really cool. Oh, definitely. It was the, the, the cinematics within it and the choreography and it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. And then uh, we already talked a little bit about uh, Princess Pathetas, uh, her powers that, uh, that she seemed to have a little bit more control than, than what uh, maybe Mausak thought, you know, but Mausak, even he says, well, she's got a, great power but she needs to be trained and that's why he's going to stay there so i thought that was that was just some really really cool things there oh definitely they they are all cool so we, uh, we didn't get any feedback this this episode what are you thinking so far of the of this kind of slow rewatch and now that we're we're here we're we're up to episode 4 what do you what are you thinking did your I, like this is what I thought about this week. Did your impression of the series change at all? Did it get deeper? Or... It got deeper and it was less confusing at this point because I actually was able to binge watch it completely. Right. And remember certain instances, what was going on within specific episodes. And w like I said, this one was the one that said, oh, I love this. I yeah. love what's going on because the humor, the action, the drama that was going on with it actually sucked me in yeah. by this time when I was doing the original watch. And and that's that and I'm like, okay, now I'm interested in the characters. I love the idea of Yennefer. I love Geralt. I love Yaskier. I like what's going on with Siri. Uh, I showed a lot of sympathy for Calante Cal uh, and everybody that's involved and everything that goes on after this, it's a, a mix of everything. And that's what I really enjoy about the actual show itself. Yeah. Yeah. For me. And that's the thing for me, it, it enriched really my, my positivity of the, of the series in general, because this was the episode where originally several months ago, when I stopped watching, this was the episode because I was oh, just really? like, yeah, it was, it was episode four. And I was just like, cause that was when for me, I had that aha moment that all of these timelines are, are all separate and, oh, I've got to really pay attention to this. And I, I don't know what was going on months ago when I watched it that I, I was just like, I don't have time. Yeah, I, you didn't I, want to put the time in. Yeah, you, you're I, like, it's like, oh, this is like work. I, I didn't want to invest. Yeah, I didn't want to invest in it as badly as that sounds. I didn't want to invest in a show that I wasn't podcasting on, you know. And yeah. uh, and so this time when we went back and when I binge watched all eight episodes and then got to this episode and then when we got to this uh, rewatch, yeah. I got to this episode. It really made me appreciate 
that this this kind of slow rewatch, this kind of rewatch with the idea of spoilers, it it really really helped me because I I really like I said appreciated it more was yeah, the the biggest it, thing. It I could definitely think of. does, and I, I think that's why that was a good idea that you suggested that we binge watch it first and then mm-hmm. do a rewatch. Now I don't want to do that for everything. Oh, it's, I know that. I know <laughs> that. Know, but the, for for this, it, it's really it's it really, it really worked well. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, unlike Ozark, where you just like got sucked into it and you had to watch it. <laughs> Ozark is so good, man. Yeah, if people are not watching Ozark. I've watched uh, 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 like select few episodes because I sit down with my mom I and she'll through. have it on, and I definitely do need to sit down and watch the whole thing. From I ripped beginning through to all end. three seasons of that in, I, I want to say about a week in between everything else that I was watching. And in, because I wasn't podcasting on it, 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 it drew me in and Jason Bateman is so good. Oh those, yeah. It's completely out of character for him. Yeah. Those yeah, kids so. are so good. The wife is I mean, just ever there. Everything about that show. I don't think there's, anything and i binge watched all three seasons really quickly i don't think there's anything that that was bad yeah that was bad i i there really wasn't the only thing that they didn't really well they addressed it but they didn't really address it was there's one of the characters who is he's not one of the main characters he's not one of jason bateman's kids yeah uh, one of the other adolescents that's in the show like sprouted like I want to say like three or four inches and like went from being from looking like a little boy to yeah. looking like a man between oh, wow. season two and three. I, I think it was season two and three. So when you see him at the end of season two, he looks like a little boy. And at season three, like he looks like he's a full grown man, you know, <laughs> like that's how much he sprouted, how much the, wow. the actor sprouted in that, however long it was between those two seasons. And they don't really acknowledge it, but you know, time has passed. So, and, and they acknowledge that time has passed, but it, it's, it's one of those things that, that it took me a second. Like I literally had to go to IMDb and goes, is this the same actor? Kid? And, yeah, <laughs> and, and look at it and go, yep, that's the same kid. He yeah. just, he literally, he literally went from looking like a little boy to looking like a man, a young man. <laughs> yeah. In that, I'm like in the between. walking dead where Carl. <laughs> <Yeah. is. laughs> yeah. and, and like Carl. Yeah. With the walking dead where Carl, where you're just like, this kid's still 10 years old. Years he old? looks like he's 20, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's supposed uh, to be 13 now, but he's really, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so no Ozark. I, I'm, I highly recommend Ozark to anybody. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, I plan on watching it eventually, but you know, with, Everything that's going on, everything on hiatus, and we're still doing our thing. Yeah. yeah. And the cool thing is, is that we're able to do all these things. And, you know, for those of you listeners that are out there and don't know what to listen, you know, watch at this point, and if you've not touched on Ozark, I'm pretty sure... You know, Steve is recommending that. Oh, I, I highly recommend. Like uh, people had highly, highly recommended it to me for a long time, and I, uh, I had neglected to check it out until, like I said, until we went through this whole thing. Yeah. And I, I just, I needed something as, as badly as I said, I needed something kind of like Better Call Saul that I could just watch. That I I wasn't podcasting on that I wasn't yeah definitely about, that I wasn't trying to send voicemails in and uh, and Ozark Ozark fit that bill perfect for me yeah you this. needed something full of drama something a little out of the ordinary yeah sometimes people need you know some sort of humor I always recommend yeah. Superstore I just oh Superstore is so good and, and I, it's getting better oh definitely it's, and I, I I don't know if it's ending this season or not but it it looks like it might be but. I binge watched what was it Parks and Rec oh, after so I good. watched and after I w- binged watched The Office and I never watched The Office completely and I did and nice. then I went on to Parks and Rec and I binged watched that and I completed that as well. Now next week we are getting or this coming week I should say I think it's Wednesday or Thursday that they're doing a office uh, reunion. I, uh, Parks and Rec is it office? Uh, Park, or, Park, yeah, Parks, Parks and Rec, and Rec. is doing. Yes. It. Yeah, Parks. Yeah. And, they. So, I I saw a tweet this morning from Chris Pratt 
yep. to where it's been completed. I didn't watch the 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 tweet from Amy Poehler, uh, I but did. I just I just did you was so it looks like it's it looks like it's been completed and they're ready to, to release it. I don't know how they're going to release it, but it, it's going to be interesting and it's going to be fun. And if you guys need a lot of humor in your life, do so. Watch those shows. It just keeps you feel like, oh, I'm still in the world. I'm having fun. Exactly. When you when know. you get, to, I will say this to anybody who's watching Parks and Rec for the first time, just now in 2020, realize that when you get to the last season, that last season was actually, oh, I've got to look it up because I'm because because they there's a bunch of things they predicted in that last season. Oh yeah, actually came true. True. Yeah. Before but but it was before so i'm going to look it up now so that i don't sound stupid yeah the last season was in 2015 mhm and, and they so, jumped to like 2017 at certain yeah point. 2020 yeah. It, it it jumps that last season jumps between 2020 2030 20, it's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of years gaps but there's a yeah. bunch of things that they that they predicted that they ended up being correct on so which is pretty cool, too, because they do make a joke at the very end of the last season about Chris Pratt, because by the time that last season was being filmed, he was already in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, no, the fifth season, the, the fifth season when they go to London. Yes, exactly. Not not the last season. It oh, was wasn't the last season. Yeah, yeah it was, it was London. Yeah, season, when it go, was the when London they... one. I'm getting confused, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I I when I when my friends are like, you gotta watch out for it. Listen to it. It's like it's, oh, it's, it's like yeah, I didn't have enough beer. Cool, <laughs> yeah, it's such a cool thing because it, throughout the whole, again, this is for people who don't realize, throughout the whole, the first four seasons of that show, when you see Chris Pratt, he doesn't look. I mean, he doesn't look bad, but you definitely can tell he can He's shed. Flabby. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely shed a few pounds, and then suddenly in in the in that I think it's season five they go to London, yeah, and is. he's just like shredded, like he's like he's thinned out, he's lean, and uh, and they make a joke that yeah he makes a joke that he stopped drinking beer or something like that. It's 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 hilarious. It's yep, really, that's what really it was. Yeah, that they recognize that. Yeah, that's where it, yeah that exactly. Oh yeah, they they <laughs> literally like, oh, and this is funny if you look at the IMDb <laughs> for it. They that's the only reason why they did those London episodes was because he was filming Guardians of the Galaxy in the UK, London. Yeah, and so yeah. and they didn't want to they didn't want to halt <laughs> his character's production. So yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Parks and Rec. I highly recommend anybody if you like, especially if you like The Office, watch watch Parks and Rec. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. So, what do we have comic talk tonight, Mark? We've gone so eh, way it's off fine. track. But you got to give some That's people okay. some levity, a little humor. Got to get them all excited, exactly. You know, clear their minds of what's going on around this world. That's what podcasting is about. That's what about our entertainment is. So, basically, uh, exactly. comic talk this week. The only thing I have is Zack Snyder did a live rewatch with people on YouTube on the Justice League movie. About uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I started watching it. I kind of fell asleep. But uh, <laughs> also, I, I recommend it to people because when I rewatched it again, it was really interesting to see because it's not the greatest of visuals since it's in his theater room on a projection screen. And obviously, they don't reach out to people who are geeks like me that work in the industry of home theater and don't know how to record something like that but okay nonetheless i would recommend it because he he touches on topics it's, it's pretty much almost his commentary on top of the justice league movie that was finalized and you get hit to hear his viewpoints all the shots that he has done and what they changed yeah. within the movie and i think that's great because you know We'll hopefully get the Snyder cut, you know, <laughs> like the Donner cut and from Superman. <laughs> from Superman. Exactly, and I do love that that Donner cut, man. It's amazing to watch that, and I recommend all of you out there actually do that because there there are so many different versions of uh, Superman two that are out there, and that and, and Justice League is pretty much the Superman two of <laughs> this decade nice. you know and i i think of it as that because honestly 
I would love to see it. They're actually looking to invest money into this when it comes out. I do want to see it because there were so many things that were implied. If you go onto the Twitter worlds or go onto YouTube's, and you could actually look at Zack Snyder being interviewed regarding all the scenes that he already had put in place that they sort of filmed, but they had to wait on CG work, but he was gone from the project. And now they're looking to implement that. And I guess Warner Brothers is actually putting out more money to do it. So hopefully we get that and we'll be able to see it. I would love to see it and do a watch with you guys about it. Very cool. Yeah. Podcast recommendations. I have, I uh, just have one or two, actually, I guess TV podcast industries is they will be starting up their penny dreadful city of angels uh, podcast this week. I have actually already watched it cause I have showtime anytime. And I was able to watch the podcast, the penny dreadful city of angels premiere episode. And it is amazing. I loved it. And uh, the actors are great. Again, it's written by John Logan and so I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what the, what, uh, the TV podcast industries guys, Derek and his crew have to, to say about it. I will be send, I will be sending them voicemails, uh, each week with this penny dreadful podcast. So listen for me on the penny dreadful city of angels podcast, TV podcast industries. Awesome. I love them. They're great. Awesome. That is so cool. They, they are great people and they have a great podcast. We highly recommend them. Uh, I would also like to recommend Inside of You by Michael Rosenbaum. And he played Lex Luthor in Smallville, in the actual Smallville series, everybody. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, I really enjoy his podcasts. Uh, he talks to a variety of celebrities and a lot of celebrity friends and gets down inside of them as well as himself. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whoa. Careful with that. Yeah. Now he gets inside them. Yeah, he gets inside of them. No, no, it's nothing like that. He gets deep <laughs> into the dirty. thoughts and the, dirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He gets deep in the uh thoughts of uh their uh their minds and uh, their lives and how they feel and what's going on. And it's almost like kind of a therapeutic thing to listen to. Very cool. And I just uh listened to the Beverly D'Angelo episode and that was amazing you get inside her yeah, uh, i don't know but he he got he really got that some information bad. out of her i that can tell you crude. that <laughs> that was crude. i apologize <laughs> listeners oh. but uh i i highly recommend that uh you know michael has a, a good way of bringing things out out of people of you know talking just about themselves and i really think in this day and age what's going on around us we all need to talk Absolutely. and just before the podcast you know steve and i just talked about what was going on and we had a good time yeah. about it i think we spent about 30 40 minutes uh, yeah exactly just, just talking before we actually out, started so. podcasting so, yeah. yeah so and uh that's why Listen I'm tired. To that That's why it's after ten. It's after ten. It's after eleven for you, but it's after ten for me. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah but it's my weekend. That's good. <laughs> so, but basically, I, I would highly recommend it. it. It's good. It's good food for thought. It, it gives you a little bit of insight of the celebrities that we we know, what happened in their lives, uh, what Michael's thinking, how he's get being therapeutic upon himself, and it's amazing. It, it's just people casually talking. Yeah, they're celebrities, some of them, or most of them, depending on, you know, who you think as a celebrity. But I recommend that one. Very nice. Uh, the other one that I have would be, as always, House Podcastka, which is doing the Westworld podcast now that David and Jason are doing. I'm a bit behind on the show, but they're always amazing with their insights about the show itself. I still have to catch up, so that's my weekend homework <laughs> as it were Dude, he's got bob odenkirk michael rooker nick Swar Dude, and yeah Ron Swanson. okay yeah you know, i just subscribed to that and I'm, <laughs> I'm really to you won't regret it dude yeah, you're gonna have fun yeah. so yeah michael rosamom house podcast do that i love hearing david's voice on house podcast and i love his thoughts on the show he is very insightful yes they are both of them so uh, the only YouTube recommendation I would have, well, our friends, the Grim Life Collective, Michael and Jessica, are still doing 
their Saturday midnight watch parties on YouTube, which would be all night at midnight with uh, the Grim Life Collective. This Sunday, they'll, you know, this might be up before they actually go on, but this Sunday they're doing the House on Haunted Hill watch. The original ha House on Haunted Hill, not the remake. <laughs> that was done by uh, some other company. So, uh, something I suggested as far as the movie, but they actually brought, you know, they said that's a good idea and they did it. So, they're going to be doing that. I plan on to be watching and commenting just like everybody else who is a fan of theirs. So, I suggest tuning in. I don't know what's going on the following week, but we'll see. Now, are they, do you know, are they doing the 1959 House on Haunted Hill or the 1999? 1959, the original. Ni the original, okay, okay. Yeah, the black okay. and white. I have not, I have not seen that one. That's the Vin Vincent Price one, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, okay. it's pretty cool. I have it on DVD. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I believe Michael will be uh, streaming it on YouTube and they will be doing a commentary. So you could be in the youtube group while they do their commentation and you could chat with them nice as you watch the movie itself as they are watching it very kind cool. of like elvira yeah yeah very yeah. cool it's a pretty cool thing so uh to submit feedback we didn't get any feedback this week i know we kind of kind of sprang the the one episode a week uh episode the one episode a week podcast on you guys but uh next week we will be covering episode five of season season one of the witcher and we would love to hear your feedback. You can send that to our Facebook page, which is panels to which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T O is spelled out right there in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. You can also call us and leave a voicemail at 845 350 2095. Again, that's 845 three five zero two zero nine five is there a is there a time limit on those voicemails mark do you know of or i always recommend getting them to us at least thursday before the next episode no i mean is there like a 90 second or 120 seconds or is there no any kind of, there okay. is no time okay. limit as far as the overall time okay that you could record cool cool uh i i clocked it at lara's being over eight minutes okay and i i think it was close to 10 minutes wow. and I edited it down. So it was pretty much an audible and she sounded great. So nice. uh, yeah, I will edit everything down. So you sound great. Yeah. So and send us a voicemail either to the email address or to that, that phone number. Yeah. If you have a way to record your voice on your computer, do so send it in a WAV file, Absolutely. whatever to our email address, or just call the phone number and we'll still get it and I'll be able to download it and I'll edit it Absolutely. down so you'll sound great. We are also on YouTube at Panels to Pixels Podcast. So just search for Panels to Pixels Podcast on YouTube. You can uh, subscribe to us there. Give us a thumbs up, whatever that, whatever method you decide to choose. And also, you can always hear us on, on just about any podcast player of choice. I'm not sure. I know we're on Spotify. We're on Google Play. We're on Apple iTunes. There's several others. Pod chaser, pod maester. Ma I am. <laughs> if you subscribe to Pod Chaser, please do give us a vote and give uh, some sort of like uh, thumbs up or recommendation. That would be awesome. So, where can listeners hear you? Can they hear you anywhere at this moment, Mark? Or are you just panels to pixels right now? Uh, yeah. Well, well. Uh, honestly, it's like I'm normally a co-host on the Walking Dead talk through Brian Malosh and Kyle McAdams. With that, we review The Walking Dead each week. Unfortunately, with the whole coronavirus, uh, the season finale of The Walking Dead has been on hold. So, and, and fear is fear is on hold, and World Beyond is on hold. Everything is, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that's on hold. So, with that, Kyle and I created the new podcast for Talk Through Media called Let's Talk Through, and we put out our first episode last week. We're not sure exactly what we're doing coming up, but we're going to have fun. If you have any recommendations, I think Kyle put something out on Facebook on the Let's Talk Through Facebook page. And you could send in a recommendation of whatever in pop culture you want us to talk about. 
And that would be amazing. Very cool. So you could hear me on TalkThroughMedia.com with Let's Talk Through, The Walking Dead Talk Through, or Fear the Walking Dead Talk Through, because there are older podcasts you could listen to if you're not into that or you haven't ever listened to that. And you could hear those on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Like Steve said, Absolutely. you know, we're on Spotify the Walking Dead talk through all of talk through media is on Spotify as well as Stitcher and Google Play. So check those out if you have nothing better to do, and if you've listened to everything that we've done. <laughs> Absolutely, and you can hear my voice, of course, right here on Panels to Pixels. And as I said earlier, I submit various voicemails to podcasts, and they play those for me. Uh, I will say one thing that I forgot to mention earlier. We have to go back. Lost Revisited podcast is back. They will be starting back up weekly uh, next week. They they released one today. We're recording this on Friday, 24th. April 24th. And uh, they released one today and they will start. They will be back weekly again with that Lost Rewatch. So check them out. Podcastica and the Next Level Online Network. And that's a joint effort between the two. Again, that's We Have to Go Back, Lost Revisited Podcast. Awesome. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.